Today's the 10th of September. And I'm going to take my 60 yard group first and then uh, we're going to go out on the farm and put some cameras out. I'm going to walk you through the process that I use for uh, figuring out where to put the cameras and how to set up to get my initial inventory. So this is it. I haven't put a single camera out yet. Today is going to be the first day and um, we'll take you along on that mission. But uh, first I got to shoot a few arrows here. It's windy. So I've got to have, first off, I got to have some excuses now. I mean, even if it wasn't windy, I'm going to say that it is because I watched Owen's video blog. He shot that 60 yard group and it was like that. And I've been out here trying and trying and trying and I'm hitting, you know, like that. So it kind of took the wind out of my sails. I'm feeling like I might just quit uh, because even on my best day when I was shooting every day, you know, year round, I couldn't shoot that well. So there's no hope that I'm going to be able to compete with Owen when it comes to shooting 60 yard groups. But I can get myself ready for the season at least. So let's take a few shots here. The wind definitely makes it tough. You know, and that's not an excuse, although, like I said, I wouldn't mind having a few of them. But when it's a 15 mile an hour wind like this, it kicks your bow arm around a lot. I'm not sure how much your maximum shooting range goes down when it's windy, but it's a lot. Everybody feels like they can shoot a certain distance because they shoot that distance well in their backyard, but you get under real hunting situations where you've got the adrenaline, you feel like you need to rush the shot a little bit, then you can throw a little wind in there, some awkward body positions. You know, your maximum shooting range drops off really fast. So even if I could get my groups closed right down at 60, where it was the size of my fist, that still wouldn't be my maximum shooting distance when I'm hunting. It would still be way shorter than that. Yeah. Oh well, we'll go look at them. All right, so next we're gonna go down and I'm gonna update you on my lifetime project, which is lifetime project minus, I'll take a couple years off the lifetime project because I got quite a bit done this past week. So we'll look at that and then we're gonna go out and uh, like I said, put some truck cameras out and I'm gonna walk through my process for deciding where to put them and how to set them up. I got this patio, the smaller part on the back of the house finished up. This was my goal to have this done before the hunting season. So I've got, you know, everybody's got their honeydew list and I just made a, a good check mark next to this box. Uh, I'm not saying I won't do a little bit more, maybe on the bigger part here if I get ambitious or a little bit extra time, but that was the main one to get that finished up. So I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I mean, it's, we've been doing this now for a while, so it's not complete amateurs, but it looks pretty nice for people who don't do it for a living, I think. Uh, and and you know, a whole lot cheaper than uh, if you hire somebody to do it. I wouldn't say that I'm ready for prime time yet, but I'm pretty happy with the progress of the Lifetime Project. Realtree's Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Nikon, Ozonix, Redneck Blinds, Wasp Archery, America's Best Bowstrings, Hoyman Tree Saws, RTP Outdoors, Spot Hog Releases, and Realtree. So now I'm out on the farm. I've got three cameras that I'm putting out today. And I want to uh, take you through a little bit of detail on where I put the cameras and uh, what my goals are. I don't like to put cameras out too early because you know, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, you just kind of spin your wheels because up until about the first part of September, the bucks are in their summer ranges. 
they shed their velvet, they break up their bachelor groups, and they disperse into their fall ranges. And that all takes place, you know, right about now. So they're starting to now fall back into these ranges that they'll be using for the rest of the year. So it makes sense to get the cameras out and try to find them. Uh, we know where some of these deer were at during the summer, but we don't necessarily know where they're going to be during the fall. So I've got three out today. I'm putting three out today. My focus is trying to find back this heavy eight pointer that Drake filmed back in early August. And uh, there's this spot where I'm at today. There's another ridge uh, further to the south. And then we're going to jump across the valley and put a camera over there. These are spots where historically that buck has shown up in the past. So hopefully we can uh, get a bead on him unless something else shows up. That's my number one uh, for this year. My locations really revolve around accessibility. I don't want to go deep into the timber or really even press it. You know, I'm standing out here talking right now. We drove a four-wheeler up. I have no problem whatsoever with this, you know, what I'm doing. I've got my waders on, you know, so I'm making sure that I'm not leaving any scent here. But, you know, the deer are used to a certain amount of human activity here. You know, this is the edge of a food plot. You know, this is where, you know, I'm out here spraying and, and doing stuff on a regular basis. So it's not a big deal. But they'll still come out here, hopefully, because the food is here. So we can find them even if it's only at night. Uh, so that's the starting process. Pick the locations that are easy to access where you're not going to leave scent, where you're matching normal human activity. Um, in Iowa, I get to put my cameras over bait. So I use a bag of corn. In some states, you're not allowed to do that. You know, you're going to have to use mock scrapes or, you know, trails, heavy trails where they cross creeks and, you know, that sort of thing, more natural movement. Uh, but I take advantage of the fact that I can run over bait so I can get my inventory as quick as possible and then move on. Keep my camera moving, you know, try to cover as much ground on this farm as I can and, uh, and see what's here. I've got to be out of town for a few days, but I know that uh, uh, Drake and Tyler were going to come out and check these in, I think, three days. It's kind of my normal. I pour a bag of corn out. Three days later, I come out, pour another bag out, pull the card, put a fresh card in, you know, and just keep cycling until I either give up on that spot or find something that I'm interested in. Uh, so keep checking back on the video blog and I'll, I'll show you probably on the very next one what we pull on these cards. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of like Christmas time. I think this time of the year is almost more exciting sometimes than the hunting season itself because you get a chance to see all these deer and you know the, the anticipation really builds. It's a lot of fun. So uh, uh, like I said, keep checking back and we'll show you what I can pick up on these cards.